So today we have the failed kamikaze attempt back on the bench and the customer actually accepted for me to go ahead and attempt a repair on this thing, which should make for an interesting video. So I do believe that the switch is going to be repairable. I've already started to try to clean up some of the excess solder mask above the kamikaze area, but I figured I should just start recording now. So just to catch you guys up, there was a failed mod attempt on this particular switch. Um, the customer dug a little bit too far into the board. And now I believe the dat zero point between the SSC and the NAND is severed. So let me just show you a really cool tool quickly that we're going to be using for this repair. These are some board layer scans from the OLED console. I'll have a link to this in the description. There are also board scans for the V1 switch, I believe, and the light. So these are sort of interactive. You can click and drag and you can press W to go further into the board like this. So you can see this is with all the components off. This is actually still the same sort of top layer of the PCB. And we can already see sort of what's gonna happen if we go one layer further to take the sub trade off. You can see all the areas that are sort of raised. These are the areas that have copper traces underneath them. So this is the area that we're dealing with. You can see if I show you under the microscope, I'm starting to clean up some of this solder mask that he has applied here because I wanna get a clear view of what's going on. But effectively right here is where they've dug down into the board to get the, that zero point. Before we dive into the repair, we gotta pull a name for the giveaway. If you guys are interested on the R slash soldering subreddit, they are giving away lots of really cool tools. And today I'm announcing the winner for the iFixit Fix Hub, which comes with this really sweet portable iron. So without further delay, let's draw a name. And we've got 447 entries today, so you have a pretty solid chance of winning if you wanna sign up for future giveaways. But let's click the wheel. And see who wins. That's a lot of names, actually. <laughs> Major Pineapple 2669, congrats. You have won the iFixit Fix Hub here. I'll shoot your name over to Justin and he will get you sorted. So congrats and let's get back into the repair. So this is the area that the customer dug into the board. I think one layer too deep, but we'll find out in a moment here. Now it's important to note that between this layer and the layer above here, there is a layer of substrate. So if we take away all of this ground layer here, we're gonna have this little substrate left over below it. And once we take away that layer, we're going to see this ground plane here below it, which is just an entire ground plane with a few vias going through it. So you can see most of this layer is gonna be ground and we actually don't really need to worry about digging through the majority of this because as you can see, we're gonna be digging in this area here and in this same area, you can see there's really not much going on unless we somehow made our way over here to these vias. And then if we go one layer deeper, again, between this layer and this one that you're seeing here, there is a layer of substrate that we'll have to go through. But you can see this little pad right here, or it's actually like a via that's going through a couple layers of the board, which we'll see in a moment here, is the dat zero point. And this is connected to the SOC here via this trace. You can see if we follow it, we can just keep dragging, goes down here and it goes to this pad, and this is actually underneath the SOC. So if we move up a few layers now, this is gonna come through the board as this little circle here until finally it actually touches the pad on the SOC here, one of the BGA pads under the, the SOC. So obviously everything on this layer is not fair game because if this trace gets severed or if this trace gets severed, um, this is fair game here. If this or this goes away, we don't really particularly care because again, this is just the ground layer. Usually these two are the ones that get hit the most. And severing these traces is 100% going to prevent boot. If I go one layer deeper, I believe this is the layer they dug to. So they've dug down to this layer and they're now soldering to this dat zero point here. This inherently means that they've severed this trace from the SOC. So the SOC no longer has proper communication with the NAND. So anyways, I'm just going to continue uh, exposing the first ground layer up here. You can see it's starting to come through and we just wanna take this slow and go one layer at a time. And you can see they've actually dug quite far to the left. You can see this here is going to be the next layer down, that next ground layer down. So this is actually all we have to work with with the first layer on the left, which obviously is fine because it's ground, but I'm hoping here that they didn't dig too far into the board. Again, I just wanna sort of do a wide area here and expose sort of what they've done so far. So far, this is all just solder mask, like a big thick layer of solder mask. And then we're finally getting to the ground layer there. So it looks like they did dig quite a large area out. Um, you can see right there, that's where they sort of started digging through. You can see the solder mask on the second layer under there. I'm gonna get rid of this solder mask here to make sure this is still connected on 
this side of the command resistor. I just want to make sure this trace didn't get fully grinded through. I don't mind exposing it to see. I'm just going to take the end of a tweezer here and just scrape a little bit off here so that we can at least check for continuity. So we can measure with uh, continuity mode here if we get continuity between here and here and we do so that trace is totally fine we'll cover all this stuff up with mask later i'm not worried about that for now let's uh slowly get rid of the customer's um solder mask here and see what the damage is as you can see they did actually go kind of far down over here it does look like they went down to at least the third layer here so you can count this is layer one this is layer two and then down here is going to be layer three and you can see they at least went to layer four with this point right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there is this layer right here. This is layer three and they dug straight through it here. Got a big solder blob here, probably on that little via pad. So here's the dot zero point. If we go one layer deeper, which is I think where they dug to, I think what we're seeing is solder sticking to this via sort of connected to the pad here. So let's use some uh, alcohol again to sort of see what's going on here. Normally I would use some um, flux to catch residue. Once we start grinding through some of these uh, copper layers here, I will use a little bit of flux just to catch any debris. So you can see we're all the way through the customer's solder mask, at least down there. And fortunately, they didn't go further than the third layer. Right below this substrate here is the third layer where they should have stopped um, to solder to the DAS zero point. So we have the top ground layer here, we have the second ground layer, and then underneath this is actually gonna be the trace coming from the SOC to this via. So if I grind through this here, we should start seeing a trace um, underneath this third layer substrate. So here is where I'll use a little bit of um, flux, just some clearish flux there to catch any of the uh, little copper stuff. You can see all that is conductive there. And that's what I mean. So you can see that was just the ground layer. And now if we go a little bit further, there we're starting to see the dot zero trace. And let's actually stop and clean. Just make sure we're not grinding through it. So I think I may have, I, I think I may have actually cut through it a little bit, but that's not a problem. We can uh, go to the left a little bit more. If you use the UV light here, we can actually, yeah, you can actually see through the substrate a little bit easier. I'm not sure, because I think the pad's right here and the trace is over here on the left underneath that substrate. Uh, so it is possible we're gonna have to reconnect that. It looks like they may have ground through that. Let me get rid of this big solder blob here so we can get a better visual on what's going on between here and here. Um, before I do that though, let's just expose a little bit more of this dat zero trace over here. So I'm just gonna dig through these top layers here. That's the first layer. And that's the second layer there. And we really just wanna take it slow there. We don't need to rush because that thing is tiny, tiny, tiny. You can see there's still quite a bit of substrate on there. If I use the UV light here, you'll see what I mean. That entire trace to the left there is what we're looking to expose. And if I get rid of the UV light, you can see we only have a little bit of it. All right, and that right there should be enough to solder to. Uh, what I would like to do next is to, again, remove some of that solder on that dat zero point and make sure that we still have that connection to the via right above it. Let's try snagging a little bit more. All right, so here we go. We have a bit of a better view as to what's going on here, actually. Let me just clean the area a bit. You know, it's a little bit hard to tell for me if the trace here is cut off. So we may have to dig a little bit further down on these upper layers here. We're just gonna sort of see through the substrate a bit, what's going on. All right, so let's just use a little bit of uh, flux here. And I just want to expose a little bit more here to sort of see what's going on. So that's the second layer there. We just want to go right through that and that's it. So we just want to stop as soon as we get through this. And I don't even really particularly want to go through the substrate there. I just want to see what's going on to make sure that um, pad is connected. Yeah, look at that. So you can actually see, it's weird because we don't see the pad. We, oh, you can kind of see it now actually. But if I look with the UV light here, you can see very clearly it's, it's severed. I'm gonna dig out this whole area here so we can expose that pad. And then we're gonna dig out this here slowly. And what I'm gonna do now is mask off all of the areas around here that I don't want solder to stick to. So in order to apply solder mask in really specific areas like that, 
I like to just pop some on my mat here. And then I've been using these little probes from Best to apply the mask very, very accurately and in small amounts at once. We don't want really thick layers of this stuff. All right, so now let's get some solder in some of these areas. And similar thing here, I'm just gonna dump some solder paste on my mat. And we're just gonna kind of like pop it down in here. And honestly, that is probably plenty, plenty. Cool. And now we can just hit this with some hot air. And hopefully we can get some of this to stick to those pads. Cool, so we got some on basically everywhere where we need it. Look at that, perfect. There's a little bit much on the left there. You can see there's kind of a big blob on that really tiny trace. And if we just so much as hit that with our tweezers, that is gonna rip out of the substrate. Let me just add a little bit more flux here, just so it doesn't stick to the pad more. Perfect, cool. Now we can clean this up with a Q-tip and we can start running some wires. So I do have some uh, 38 gauge wire here, but I believe this is gonna be a little bit too thick. These traces are super tiny. So you can see that is just too thick to be soldering to um, those traces on the left there. It's gonna put way too much stress on those and can rip those out. I can't stress how sensitive those are. So I actually have some super tiny wire I just grabbed recently. Normally I would just use the trace repair, copper trace repair pads. But in this case, I have this right here, which is uh, 0.008 millimeter wire. So it's super, super tiny wire. So we can compare the thickness of this to the thickness of the um, traces there. And you can see this is gonna be much better suited size for those, those traces there. It's really helpful to have two pairs of tweezers for this stuff. All right, I'm not going to tear the right-hand side of the wire off because we want that extra bit to install the Pico Fly later. So what we need to do right now is clean this up without disturbing these wires. So we need to use really delicate brush, nothing crazy. And these Kim wipes are great for this because they're so thin. So they're not gonna put too much like pressure or catch on the wire. And we can also use some low temperature hot air here and alternate with gentle brushing with some IPA. And there we go, nice and clean. Um, what I would like to do right now actually is hook this up to the bench power supply and see if the thing boots. Uh, Cause if it boots, then we're good to go to cover this in some solder mask and to make sure this wire doesn't go anywhere. But what I will do before we do anything else here is I'm going to press this wire down onto the PCB and we're going to put some uh, UV resin on this so it doesn't go anywhere. I'm just gonna press down on this and then we're gonna go ahead and cure that with the UV light. I'm gonna use this little switch battery connector I made. It just has a resistor between ground and the middle pin. I'm gonna plug that into the battery connector here. We're going to set my bench power supply to 4.2 volts at um, two amps. And we're going to simulate a power button press once we turn this on. So I'm gonna turn on the power supply here. So you can see we have 4.2 volts live. This top thing here is my bench power supply. So we have 4.2 volts and no current draw, which is good. So we shouldn't have any current draw until I tell it to turn on with the power button. What we should see is like about 150 milliamps. It should jump up to 300 milliamps after that if it's gonna actually turn on and we should see it kind of fluctuating around 300-ish. So let me press the power button here. So we have that 150 and is it gonna jump up? Uh, it looks like it might still be stuck in first stage boot. So we may still have some other problem. I wanna check the command resistor cause I actually don't remember if we had seen that that was blown or not. So let me turn this off. We're gonna to wanna to measure this resistor right here and it looks like maybe that got ground through at some point. I don't think I did that, but let's see if this resistor is 4.7 kilo ohms or not. Yeah, no, that thing is shot. So that is going to also prevent boot. So we're going to unfortunately have to pull that off and solder a new one. But I think I'm happy enough with our trace repair here that we can cover this in mask so that when we go and hit the resistor with hot air to replace it, we don't screw with any of that. Guys, I'm telling you this bent thing here is the best tool in the world. I don't know why this little like pin that has a little 
tiny bend on the top of it. It's just like incredible tool for <laughs> micro soldering. I would pay a hundred dollars for this pin if I had to. All right, we can cure this now. And now we can address this resistor that is always broken. So this is looking really good. And hopefully, if we're lucky, this switch works. And that is looking good, 4.2K. It should be 4.7, but we're reading in circuit, so it's normal. So round two here, power on the bench power supply. And then again, we're looking for about 150 like we just saw, but then we really wanna see it jump up to that 300 milliamps. If it doesn't, that means it's stuck in first stage boot for some reason. If it does, it very likely means that this switch is working. So let's see, pressing power. That is looking good. Hey, look at that, it just booted. So we're at 300 milliamps, very good. So I think this uh, this switch is working. So let me press the power button again, and we should see it dip to like five milliamps, and we do. And if we press it again, we turn it back on. So this switch is totally working, and we can get this thing reassembled in a screen and see it turn on. So the SOC is looking much cleaner now, and I actually got this flex cable installed preemptively because I didn't want that um, that zero wire flying everywhere, especially with how thin it is. All right, so I've got this on the customer screen here. Uh, the only issue is we have a dead battery, so I'm just gonna use the bench power supply to boot this with my little adapter here. So I'm gonna turn on the power and pressing the power button. Ah, okay, weird. So <laughs> I think the display is all screwed up. Yeah, so you can see it's working, but our display is all yellow. So I think this is gonna be a display connector issue or an issue with the, you can't, you can't even see that, but it is actually in Horizon OS. So the board works, it's just the display is yellow. I see the problem. That pin is probably further in than it should be. Okay, I thought it was actually just down, but it's actually pushed inwards. So this may end up being a FPC replacement. Yeah, I think I gotta replace this uh, stupid display connector. All right, so we're gonna replace this uh, screen connector here. We're gonna heat from the bottom. All right, it's off. Let's get these all cleaned up. All right, that's all off of there. All right, let's throw this in our test screen here. Get a screw in here and hopefully we now have a working console, question mark. Hey, look at that, no yellow screen, so it had to have been that bent pin and the connector, good stuff. Let me get this in the customer screen, I'll get it fully reassembled and we'll do a little wrap up. So I have the console put back together and we can turn it on now. And we boot into the no SD card screen with no problems and we can boot into OFW as well. So this console is officially fixed after a nice chunk of work, but we got there in the end. I appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.